Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mafia and Gangsters video. I thought I would mix another one of these here while I'm continuing the hot streak associated with my Mysteries and Oddities video. This one has to do with an entry. There's not much information really to state, but it's still pretty pertinent information because what happened in one instance was actually applied in a very popular movie back in the 70s, I believe. I've never seen this movie though before but apparently there's a very memorable scene and the character involved in that scene is the one I'm going to talk about here. What's also interesting is it's very frustrating because the it showcases how law enforcement can do all the work necessary to get someone arrested but all it takes is a few technicalities to then get that person released in this case from prison and then they're back to doing what they were doing before all because of that small technicality so pretty frustrating stuff I'm talking about this guy a guy by the name of Rudolph Santabello who is pretty much a was a lifelong career criminal within the mafia world so so here's all the information associated with him very very little though info to give when it comes to his early life all that's known really is that he was born sometime in 1928 uh, not known exactly what date it was but somewhere between then and then growing up to become a young man that's when he joined the Genovese crime family who I've mentioned in some of my other past videos as well and he actually became a pretty high-ranking member within that family he was considered a capo regime so it's usually someone that's a made man someone who has become a actual member of the uh, of the family so much so that they have kept uh, given their own crew of soldiers so think of him more like as a captain of some sort within the family and he manages his own small crew now the first major incident in his life that happened was July 21st 1950 so on that night him and another associate a guy by the name of Joseph Corbo murdered this guy right here a guy by the name of Alfred Laredo and he was someone that was a New York police officer who just by pure happen chance happened to be off duty during that fateful night there he was this off duty officer driving around somehow he saw that these two men were holding up somebody within it looks like it was the owner within a butcher shop and so this guy doing the right thing went inside that butcher shop uh, per, uh, I guess stopped it or forced those two men to leave and then those two men escaped but he pursued them thereafter somewhere during this pursuit that's when the two men again including the, that guy Rudolph Santabello they shot back into the car I believe if I'm not mistaken they opened fire and then when that happened that's when they mortally wounded him so this guy offered Laredo this poor guy ended up dying thereafter and then these two men were later apprehended now where the frustrating part comes is this so they were arrested and in that case Santa Bello was taken and interrogated pretty much overnight he was found guilty convicted of first-degree murder uh, this was somewhere around June 1951 so about almost a year or so after the incident occurred and then he was sentenced to life but that wasn't the end of it because cut to about 15 years later and in that year the US Supreme Court decided I guess on a nationwide basis that anything involving illegal searches by police would result in convictions being reversed so that is the first technicality that essentially got him off scot-free so imagine that imagine the frustration here he was essentially a convicted cop killer and he was able to be sentenced to life in prison for it and then the US Supreme Court decided that no nope, anybody involved with illegal searches by the police how his was determined as legal search I don't know uh, presumably they were probably searching his car but didn't provide I guess the proper documentation for it you know how you have to get like a warrant for those type of searches who knows 
but in either case it involved his release so very very frustrating and that didn't stop Santabeo because the minute he got released from prison imagine him being essentially given a second chance in life absolutely not like he decided he wanted to go back into the mafia world and immediately started doing numbers running now where he came into a very prominent scene was with this guy Frank Serpico I'm sure you've heard of that last name Serpico that from that very famous movie from Al Pacino and in that movie apparently there's a scene I've never seen it but there's a scene where Serpico arrests somebody takes him over to the precinct handcuffs him to a rail and then when he comes back he realizes that the other cops who are I guess on the know with regards to that same to that person uh, have already uncuffed him and then are kind of like jovially talking to each other, almost like they know each other. And that sets off, this sets off Serpico. Uh, apparently, though, none of this really happened in real life. That person that was handcuffed in the movie was actually this guy, Santabeo. Because apparently what happened was Serpico arrested Santabeo because he caught him doing that numbers running, that illegal activity. And so because of it, Santabeo was found guilty yet again, this time sentenced to one year in prison. But on another technicality, can you believe this? I mean, there's an angel with this guy. On another technicality, another court decided that he would be released early because of some special decision involving plea bargains. I don't know exactly how that was tied into him either, but presumably it was probably another mass decision of sorts where anybody involved with certain plea bargains then would have been impacted and they would be uh, released early. So he was given yet another early chance in life when it comes to being released from prison uh, by pure dumb luck. But then again, Santabeo decided he wanted to go ahead and continue his life in uh, the mafia world, now given two chances. And this time, though, he was able to pretty much stay within that world for a good while, several decades, in fact. Uh, he supervised a crew from a place called Club Arthurs, which was a mafia social type club located in the Bronx by Arthur Avenue. Avenue. So from about 1968 or so all the way until 1991, about, oh, I'm sorry, 1994, there he was pretty much out in daylight, broad daylight, uh, running his mafioso activity, loan sharking, illegal gambling, bookmaking, more numbers running, all again after being released twice early from prison due to technicalities. Cut to 1994. And then finally, after several decades, he was ca he was caught again, in this case, doing these illegal activities, convicted on 10 counts of gambling. And on 1995, March 27th, he was sentenced to 78 months in prison, so a little over six years or so. By now, though, considering if he was born in 1928, he would be in his 70s. But he still, at that point, was someone that was not really caring too much about the prison life, probably knowing that he would be released early considering his previous examples. In fact, in, during the trial, he was noted by reporters to be in a relaxed and joking mood, and he was even pleading with the judge. Again, this is a guy who had decades of illegal activity under his belt, but he was pleading with the uh, judge at his sentence hearing, citing his family ties. In fact, these were his words. He said, this has been a very delicate, uh, delicate situation for me after getting married, having a daughter. I don't think I would be so foolish to subject myself to going back to prison at this stage of life. I've done my best to bring my daughter up in the right manner. Again, this is him stating this, but after having decades of all this illegal mafia activity, continued illegal mafia activity happening under his belt. But he was still sentenced to those 78 months in prison and cut to about maybe five years later, so a little bit early of a release, not too much, but a little bit early, he was again released from prison after having served most of his sentence. And if you're wondering whatever happened to him, uh, Rudolph Santabello, 
He's one of the few mafia members that ended up actually living out his life and then just dying of natural causes. Sometime in 2013, if I'm not mistaken, May 2013, he ended up just passing away of natural causes. So that is quite rare when it comes to the mafia world because normally there's uh, f uh, very bad circumstances involved. But no, in this case, he lived out his full life. Again, had an angel behind his back throughout several times, considering how well and lucky he was able to get out of prison. And then he was able to then live his life as a Mafia member up until he died of natural causes. But at least in his case, his circumstance with Serpico remains, I guess, immortalized within that film. But, but that's it. That's all the information I have for... Rudolph Santabello, if anyone has any more info related to him, that'd be really great to hear. So, all right, everybody, thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.